Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to Waterlock's uh, YouTube channel here. Today we're going to do a quick talk about uh, stirring and shaking products. Uh, which ones need to be stirred, which ones don't. I'm not going to go over the whole list, but uh, in general there's uh, kind of a few different container styles we have. But one true rule is if it's in a metal rectangular can, it never needs to be shook, it never needs to be stirred, nothing will settle out, nothing will kick out. Um, so just open it and you're ready to go. Uh, if it's in a round metal can, it should be stirred. We put them in the round cans for that reason. There's two exceptions, and that is the pint of original sealer and finish. doesn't really need to be stirred, but they don't make rectangular pints, or we don't carry rectangular pints. Uh, we don't sell that many of those. And then we also have the gloss urethane. This is the satin, so this would be stirred, but the gloss urethane doesn't really need to be stirred. You can stir it anyways. Um, it's not going to hurt anything, but uh, the gloss uh, urethane comes in round gallons and quarts. It does not need to be stirred. Everything else, so the true tone colors, satin finishes, uh, anything like that should be stirred uh, before and during use if it's going to be an extended period of time. So the other two would be any round plastic valve, so you know we're talking about sealer. This does not need to be shook or stirred uh, ever. It's just ready to go. That's the universal tongue wheel sealer. And then finally the plastic gallons for our H2O LOX products. Uh, you want to do a gentle rocking of those. We'll cover that in a second. But again, metal can, rectangle, never needs to be stirred. Metal can round, I'd recommend stirring it before and during use. So we simply uh, pop the lid off. You can use a paint stir stick or anything else. I just have a flat uh, spatula here. Uh, it'll probably look kind of relatively clear. So some of it may have settled to the bottom. Uh, we just kind of dip it in and gently stir. So typically you kind of stir and pull up. And you should see that color get consistent. Usually it'll get a little bit cloudier. That's stirring in that flattening agent. And then you're ready to go. Also, uh, check your stir stick for the bot at the bottom. If you see like big clumps of anything stuck to it, you may have a particularly old can. When I require some additional uh, stirring, more aggressive stirring, I definitely recommend filtering it at that point if you see those big chunks floating around. Uh, that's called hard settling. So if it looks pretty clean and kind of runs right off the end, then you're most likely you're fine to, to use it as it is and you should have no problems. So we'll just wipe that off. And pop the lid back on since we're not going to be using anything right now. Um, so again, the Low gloss urethanes, the low gloss original finishes, uh, the true tone colors, all should be stirred before and during use. Um, the true tone products never really dry, so uh, that aggressively, so they're not you're gonna have less chance of skinning in the can and things like that, or, or bits of finish forming. So you can shake those if you want. I especially do that with the two fluid ounce samples. Uh, give them a quick shake uh, as opposed to stirring these little bottles. Um, for the little samples that are going to use the whole thing, you can give it a quick shake. Uh, it's just shaking causes problems upon storage, so if you're using the whole thing, you can shake it. Uh, it may get some bubbles in these other finishes, so let them rest before you use it. But again, for the True Tone color, since they're buffing it in, bubbles aren't really a problem. So I always shake my True Tone products, but stirring works as well. For the H2O Lox products, gentle rocking uh, with the standard kind of water-based method. Um, turn it over five or six times. We're trying not to be super aggressive, um, but we really kind of want to uh, do a little swirl. But you're just trying to get everything off the bottom, everything kind of mixed back even, distributed evenly throughout the finish. Um, again, nothing too aggressive. And the key with water-based finishes is you let them sit for about five or ten minutes after doing that. Uh, that way any bubbles that form, most of them have worked their way back out. Uh, so you can kind of go from there. Uh, I usually will start by rocking the finish, then kind of do all my prep work, get my brushes ready, tape anything off. And by the time I'm ready to go on the project, that's uh, rested long enough that we're ready to go. So that's just a quick, uh, simple shaking and rocking video. Again, shake and rock your H2O locks, stir your round metal cans. Um, and that's pretty much the basic. So a rectangular metal can does not ever need to be shook, stirred, or anything of the sort. So a quick extra note on the H2O Lux products. Uh, what we've come to learn is you want to give these a very good shake when you first get them before your first use, like five or ten minutes before your first use. Um, what I like to do is turn it upside down and really shake it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Um, this helps break anything up that may have settled or gotten stuck, but it's going to be better than just kind of that gentle rocking. 
uh, the gentle rocks break for in between coats or if you're doing a really big project kind of as you're going keep things stirred up but we notice that when stuff gets cold or it's been sitting around for a little while that a more aggressive shake is, is key to getting good results when you start so again upside down about 10 to 15 seconds let it sit about 5-10 minutes for some bubbles to pop uh, if you do go to coat and you do see some bubbles those should work themselves out no problem but good five minutes can turn to most of them.